I got to actually speak to the owner of SRG, Simon. He's on multiple podcasts as well. So I believe, you know, everybody kind of knows him as well. Now, Simon's a really good owner from, you know, the discussions, the conversations I've had with him. He really, you know, he, he facilitates the team like crazy. Uh, the, the team has a psychologist. The team has a nutritionist. The team has a physical trainer. They have everything. Like, no wonder, you know? Uh, I think it's every player's dream to have all these facilities provided for them so that they can only, they can just focus on the game itself. They don't need to focus on what to eat. They can stay healthy despite them, you know, not really thinking about what to eat because they got that nutritionist. These little things actually uh, play a part as to how players can be good, by the way. I'm not even joking. That's why you see it in football. That's why you see it everywhere. And I'm glad that now we are finally seeing more of this in esports because even in Onik, uh, previously, they had a mental coach. Uh, they don't have the mental coach anymore. But for some reason, these mental coaches, though may, they don't you know, look like they do a lot, based on the performances of the teams, it does look like they do a lot. It, it, it's like little things, subtle things that, that they do that make the team mentally stronger. I don't know what they do. I have no idea. But based on what I've seen, you know, the teams who do have mental coaches... Or, you know, some of the head coaches already are technically mental coaches. Like I would say for AP Bren, Ducky is a really good role model, father figure for the team. Um, mental coach, technically, almost, as well. He kind of, like, takes that role, too, on top of the other roles that he's doing. But, yeah, uh, for SRG, the, the management as well, the fact that the owner, the management are facilitating all the players and coaches with all these, you know, coaches, all these little things. Plus, they have given... Coach Arcadia and Ozuraveki, that much trust shows you that if if you do put the trust into right people, you can actually succeed. And uh, also, big shout out to Ozuraveki. I don't know if you guys know about this, but when Arcadia was kicked out of RRQ in season t 11, Ozuraveki told the owner that, you know, he wanted to get Arcadia. They needed to get Arcadia. And apparently, Veki, the analyst for SRG, was willing to to take a pay cut, to not get paid for a few months as long as they got Arcadia. That really, that was, that was, a, that's a great story for sure. I mean, now it's everywhere. You probably have seen it. Medias have been posting about that uh, everywhere. And um, it's really, really cool that Vecchi did that, you know? Uh, I don't know. This, this was just, this whole story felt very, it, it still does feel very surreal to this day. I, it's been a week after MSC ended, and I'm still thinking about it, thinking about like all these members, even the analysts, even the coach, who technically have never won an international trophy before, right? Yeah. Arcadia has never, it has always failed, quote unquote, failed in international tournaments, was never given the chance to really fully develop a team. He was there for RQ, he got kicked, and I think he definitely has the last laugh now, you know, knowing how RQ is performing now, plus how SRG are performing now. For some reason, but